Hey coaches, Joe Salas here. Uh, had some viewers kind of get shoot me a couple ideas for uh, for videos, and and one of the first ones that popped up and that I thought was a really good topic was air raid versus press man. So the the biggest thing for me on press man is you got to have a plan, and you got to have a plan that you work throughout the season. And then probably the second idea is I don't think press man is that good of an idea. I know the, the concept, and, and uh, when I was at Hornet Central, we played Garner, and Garner would do this to me every year. And uh, the, the, the truth of the matter was, they were a lot better than us, so they just said, we're gonna lock up everywhere and play seven in the box, and you're not gonna be able to run it. Well, and this is no uh, joke, two of the three years that we played them, we played them in an absolute monsoon, and they beat us to death because it was raining so hard, we couldn't throw the ball, and with seven in the box, we couldn't run the ball. So they got us. However, the one year that it was a pretty night, we just about beat their tails, and we had no business being on the field with them because they were better than us. So to me, you know, and I've been a D coordinator, to me, this, this look, especially going zero, gives the, uh, the underdog a chance. Because the only thing that has to happen is someone falls down, someone gets rubbed, someone has a bad play, and all of a sudden you can strike up the band, you know, instruments ready, strike up the band. So to me, it ain't the best idea in the world. I, I know what they're thinking. We're gonna overload your box and we're gonna blitz you. I know the concept, but if you're already better than the other team, why would you do that? Why, why would you give them a chance of one guy falling down and they got seven points? Why wouldn't you just play normal defense? If you're better than them, they ain't got a chance anyway. But here, it happens, and we got to be prepared for it. So here's kind of my eight, eight thoughts on the whole deal. Number one is you got to work your release drill every day. That is a, a, a period. We have a, a period we call fundo, 10-minute period, where we work release drill every single day. And you know, we're A-Ray people, so fast feed is a big part of us, but we work all the different combinations. Fast feed, quick release. Fast feed, fake one way, release the other way. Diamond release. We work all our different releases versus press man because when that day, when that night comes, we want to be ready for it. The other thing, and I hate to admit this, but the other thing is most air raid guys run the one-on-one -on -one period where you're playing, you're, you're running one-on-one -on -one routes, receivers versus DBs. I, I hate to say it, but we only do it on Thursday. You know, most people, it's an everyday thing. So just from repetition, you ought to be able to line up with anybody. And if they press man, you know, they're, they're, they're playing with their lives on it. Uh, even us just doing it on Thursday, we're pretty good when we get to press against press man. We're pretty good at, we know our percentage completions are going to be a little bit down, but our yards per catch and our explosive players are going to be way up. They're just, they're gambling, and we got to make sure that they're wrong sometimes. All right, number two is you got to get good at goal line fade. And what I'm talking about on goal line fade is this, where the, the ball, we force the ball to come over our outside shoulder. We don't turn our head and turn into a corner route, but we, we run the bird, and then as the ball comes in, we force it to be caught right here. That, we call that an outside shoulder fade, or we just call it a goal line fade. We practice that every day in pat and go. So when we're in pat and go, we're not, the quarterbacks aren't bombing them down the field. We're playing, we're, we, we've got 20 yards, and, and we put a cone out, and the quarterback has to throw it toward, to that corner. So every day in pat and go, our guys are getting this over the shoulder catch, and it, it's taken two years, but we're getting really, really good at it. And I think that catch, where you put it here, that, that gives the DB no chance. Either he's gonna get the, the penalty for uh, pass interference, or you're gonna catch a touchdown. But if you're putting your body between him and the ball, he doesn't have a chance to defend that ball. Number three is compressed formations. If they're bullying us off the line of the scrimmage, uh, we get into compressed formations and they have trouble identifying, you know, once you bunch everyone up, they gotta decide how are they gonna do that? Are they gonna banjo that thing? Are they gonna lock on? How are they gonna play man? And you start screwing with their rules. Uh, Number uh, four is you gotta have rubs. We've got rubs on our slant shoot combination, and we even got, excuse me, we got rubs on our vertical stuff sometimes. We'll, we'll get them close and then rub them to get a guy off on, uh, on vertical. Uh, we love wheels and pumps versus man. 
uh, especially wheels out of the backfield. You know, someone's responsible for that guy. Once we can identify that guy, we can rub him, and now you got a back on down the sideline free. Uh, we love corner routes versus man coverage, and, and we'll draw some of that up. But our snag route with the inside guy running the corner route and the outside guy running a lazy slant, we love that combination versus man. Uh, and then uh, here are the plays that we really like. Well, and the, the last one was motions and formations. In the past, I haven't done it as much recently, but in the past when we had one stud receiver, we would go ahead, we would motion that guy and let him launch from different points just to get him off the ball so they couldn't, you know, when they got them one good ones that would get right in your face and jam and you know, jam you with that outside hand, if you're putting your guy in motion, and, and launching him from different points. You're putting, number one, you're putting doubt in their mind, but you're, you're giving the, them the inability to just bully you at the line of scrimmage. And then I like formations as far as, you know, and, and I'm pretty vanilla on formations usually, but if I know a team's gonna be press man, I wanna give them all kinds of different versions of, I wanna have two stacks, I wanna have, I wanna have the inside guy on the ball and, off, and the outside guy off the ball. I wanna have no backs. I wanna test their rules and most of the time, like this Garner example I gave you, most of the time they'll have checks where I can check them out of press man. If they are kicking my tail by formation, I can force them to check out of press man. And I think there's one other one, oh, the, the swings in the tunnels. I'll get to that when we go play. So talking about plays, 7-9 is our slant shoot combination. So you know we want to do this. Now, I don't have to draw this up to, for you guys to figure out. We can rub this thing two ways. We can rub it where we're running, rubbing this corner off the slant, and we can rub it where we're run, rubbing this guy off and, and, and then wheel this thing. So you gotta, have, you gotta be able to rub it both ways. You also have to be able to rub it. We'll, we'll go, uh, well, let, let's, uh, let's go to the next one. But be able to rub it. You gotta be able to rub this guy, and you gotta be able to rub this guy on your slant shoe combinations. Uh, the next one is, uh, and, and wheels out of the backfield, you know, whether it's, whether it's this kind of deal, wheels out of backfield, now if this guy's responsible for him, he's running, he's got to run through four guys to get to his, to his uh, responsibility. So rubs and wheels on seven and nine, and then we'll even, uh, well, we'll get to that one. So the next one is mesh. We love mesh. Uh, I like mesh because number one, you get to those compressed formations. You get you got you got bunch type sets on both sides, and you got people going all different directions. So they're having the idea who they have, and uh, and have some kind of rule set on who's got what, and are they going to scissor, and all that kind of stuff. But what we really like, uh, let's draw this one. This to us would be bunch. This is bunch 92. So it looks like this, and. We know the normal play is going to look like this. All right, so that's the normal play. That's bunch 92 to us. Well, we also, if we know we're getting a lot of man, we can return this thing where these guys come in and then whip it back out. That's great versus man. And we also like wheeling this guy. The same deal, we can rub whoever's responsible for him. We can rub him if we want to and give him a, a jump on that on that wheel route. So wheels and, uh, and returns off of uh, 92 are great for us. Uh, also double move. So normally this is a uh, corner, but he can go he can, he can go corner post or he can go post corner. He can double move the uh, the top of the route. Uh, number three is our snags. We love snag versus man. It's probably the first thing that we start thinking when we see a team playing uh, man, any kind of man, but especially press man. Because now we can usually get this guy pre-release. Let's say we got this same, this same situation that we had before. Now he's off the ball, so he's got a little room to operate. He's running the corner route. This guy's running the lazy. That corner route is usually a gimme. You know, even if this guy plays good coverage, you know, the quarterback can put the ball right here and it's a, and it's a good play for us. So three and four, which is our snag against any kind of any kind of man coverage is always a good play for us. Uh, then we can also, uh, let's take away that side, we can also 
go ahead and rub the nine sixes, which is our four verbs. All you do, what if you bring these two in close? Number one, that gives them some, some uh, dilemmas. You know, how are they gonna play this thing? If they're insisting on being up in your face, now you can rub on a, on a, uh, on a switch. You can rub it, take this guy back towards the hash, but now you've given this guy just enough, uh, just enough slowdown to pop this guy loose on the wheel, on a on a switch called 96. Uh, and then the last one is swings and tunnels. Uh, we call our tunnel uh, Lucy and Rose, but we love it versus man coverage because we're blocking. We're allowed to physically block them, and we also like it once you identify that if you swing this guy, this guy's got to run with them. Well, now you can crack swing it. And this guy's all by himself. Once they make the adjustment where, okay, they've got a banjo it, now you can crack and pipe it, and now you've got big plays there. So, uh, probably jumped around a little bit, but just, just some ideas. But it goes back to this concept of, I don't think playing man is the best idea. Uh, you know, we, we usually, teams that like to play man are usually super athletic. But if you're super athletic, if you're already physically better than the other team, why wouldn't you play something vanilla, something boring, and let your and let your athletes run around and make tackles instead of putting them out on the island and all of a sudden one guy gets rubbed or one guy gets cracked and you got a huge play. So so those are my thoughts. Uh, those are our go-to plays, and uh, and go ahead, put put your ideas down in the comments. And if, if I left one out that you really like, let me know, because I always think you know, we always want a, uh, another way to beat man coverage. But that that's our plan for man coverage, and I think it really goes back to these these two right here: is work your release drill every single day, work your one-on-one -on -one pat uh, your one-on-one -on -one receiver DB drill at least once a week. Really, most of most, most guys work it every day, but we only work it once a week. And then get good at that goal line fade. You know, uh, really, if we came out and they looked like this, the first thing we'd do is we try to take a pop on our outside guys. We just say, hey, our release drill, we, we think we're going to get the release and, and throw the fade on that guy. And if we do, then, then they're in trouble all night because if you can throw the fade on them, uh, you know, man, press man ain't the best idea in the world. All right, so that's it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and give it a thumbs or a th uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, and leave your comments. Give me some ideas. Thank you, coaches.